the clock is ticking. You do know, of course, that when people tell you that the clock is ticking, they are trying to control you. Because everybody knows that the clock ticks. The point is not what the clock is doing, it's what they want you to do while the clock ticks. Telling you about control is something which is worrisome, right? And this time, we don't like it. We want to be free, we want to be autonomous, we want to be our own person. So knowing that somebody is trying to control is terrible. But control is something which is spatial. Because you live most of your life under the control of your parents, and that's how you survive, right? If you hadn't been under control, you'd be dead. Being controlled by those who love us is not really a problem, is it? Actually, love is a kind of mutual control. You control and you're being controlled at the same time. So there is no problem there. The problem is when that somebody who doesn't love you controls you. That is a problem. And today in our society, there's actually an ideology. There's like a, a stereotype, especially for young people, how you should be. And that stereotype, that ideology is really controlling you. And they do that through lies. Let me tell you a few of the lies that they, tell, that they convince you of in order to control you. The first thing they tell you is that young people are the future. You all know that. Young people are the future. That's a lie. You are the future, but in the future, you'll not be young, you'll be old. <laughs> I never seen anybody that gets younger in the future. Everybody gets older in the future, right? So the past is the young people, the future is the old people. So that's a lie. But they do that in order to convince you that you're great and by this way to control you. Another lie, actually worse than the first one, is when they tell young people that they have a low span of attention. Everybody knows that. You're the new generation. You're made of a new stuff. The Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, you're different. So you have a low span of attention. That's a lie. It's not a lie that you don't, you have a span of attention, because you do, you do, you have a low span of attention, that's true. <laughs> the lie is that everybody in all the ages have always had a low span of attention, that's normal. In the Middle Ages, in antiquity, everybody had low span of attention. The difference is that today they tell you that's good, that's okay, that it's the other ones that have to adjust. We can only give talks of 15 minutes because you have a low span of attention. <laughs> that's what you're doing. And this is a way to control you, because in previous times, people knew they had low span of attention, and they tried to control it, right? They wanted to change it. They liked to work on concentration in order to control their own lives. Now they convince you it's okay to have a short span of attention in order to control you. And now that they control you, well, they control you through the phone, your mobile phone. That's the way they control you. If you think about it, the mobile phone is really a leech that controls you. If you lose it, if you left it at home, you're lost. You're completely lost. You don't have a life anymore. Meaning, you're dependent on the phone. You're actually toxico-dependent on the phone. If you use the phone to contact with people that love you, it's okay. It's a kind of good control. We already talked about that. The point is that most of the time you don't spend on the phone talking to people that love you, right? You have lots of these guys, these persons that you know, know about in blogs, in Facebook, and you spend a lot of time being controlled by them. And this is dominating your life. If you think about it, the time you spend there and the usefulness of that, you know you're controlled. The third lie I want to talk to you about is that you must change the world. Everybody knows that you have to change the world. You have to conquer the world, actually. That's what you have to do. It's not your house. It's not your street. It's not your neighborhood. It's the world. All of it. You'll never do that. Nobody controls the world, right? Genghis Khan, which was the greatest conqueror in history, controlled less than 7% of the world, and most of it was desert anyway. <laughs> Nobody controls the world. Try to control yourself, and that is more than enough. Conquer yourself, change yourself. You do that, that's great. But the biggest lie of all, the one that can really destroy you, is that you must follow your dreams. 
know that since you were little ones, they always told you, you must follow your dreams, you must fulfill your dreams. That is the purpose of life. In the cartoons for little kids, the films, the series, the books, they all tell you, you must follow your dreams. And that is really a way to destroy your life. Why? Well, think about it. The first thing you have to do is to choose the dream. And that is very hard. Because today, on the first, the first part of the 21st century, in Lisbon, it's reasonable, it's actually plausible for a young people like you to be world chess champion or basketball champion. You can be manager of a company, a multinational, moving millions around the world. You can be the discovery of the cure for cancer and you get the Nobel Prize in medicine. You can be a singer with a song on the top charts in New York. And all this is plausible. But you have to choose one. And of course, the clock is ticking. <laughs> and when you choose this one, all the other ones will get on nagging you that you should have chosen them. They were so beautiful. They were so great. And when you chose that dream and you try to fulfill it, well, uh, there are lots of problems, right? There are difficulties. There are obstacles. It's normal. And then you think, I chose wrong. I should have chosen the other one. So I know lots of people that they don't choose. They keep on jumping from dream to dream. Others, when they talk about work or even course, graduation, they seem to be talking about a hobby. I have to like it. I have to choose a job that... I, it's not a hobby, it's work. You won't gonna like it. It's gonna be boring. It's work. Don't think about it like it's a dream. It's work. It's a job. So it's kind of stupid as well. This is the first top one. But there's a second one. The second problem with this, following the dreams, is that you're going to fail. Why? Because all the world can be world champion. But only one can be world champion. And the second one is the first of the losers, right? And when everybody can be, it's very hard to be the one. So the probability of failure is, is obvious. It's very hard to actually do it. There's only one manager of the company. There's one of discovery of the cancer cure. There's only one uh, that can be the top chart uh, in, in, in New York. So the failure height is very high. And then you lost. And then you don't have anything. It was a dream that was destroyed. But that's not the worst of it. Worse than that is those that actually fulfill it. Suppose you are the one. The one that actually won the dream. Let me tell you, when you get there, it's not going to be as fun as it was before. Because seen from afar, it looks so beautiful. When you get there, all well, is just this. It's fake gold. You don't want it anymore. You need another dream. Actually, you want to conquer that one, so I need another one. And you're jumping from dream to dream. It's not as fulfilling as it was. But that's not the worst thing. The worst thing is what I normally call golden slavery. And I always tell my students here, uh, normally it's here, because uh, this is the room where I teach. I always tell my students, this is one of the things that especially the students at the Catholic are very, very pro prone to happen. It's a dream. And you're going to be very successful. And you're going to do it. You're going to succeed in your dream. You're going to move millions. You're going to be in luxury hotels. You're going to be first class flights. And everything goes well. You have a great career. And when you reach my age and look back, you see, everything went perfect. You just forgot to live. But besides that, everything went perfect. <laughs> you have several marriages, and you destroy all of them. Your kids don't know you because you live, they grow up without you. Uh, you don't have friends anymore. You forgot to talk, uh, I don't know, play saxophone or football. That's what you used to do, but not anymore because it's the dream. And you destroyed your life. There's a hole in it. I'm not telling you should not have plans and try to build them. And of course, everybody makes efforts to do that. I'm not, that's normal. That's natural. What I'm telling you is, while you're doing it, don't forget to live. Because life is the only thing you have. Dream, you don't have it. It's a dream. Life is the thing you have. And let me tell you, life is great. As it is. You don't have to change it. You just have to like it. Like it as it is. Life is positive. The world is positive. My father was a very wise man. And since I was a little kid, he told me lots of times something that he called a Chinese proverb. He didn't know if it was a Chinese proverb. 
and I, neither do I. But the phrase was like this. The wisdom of life is not to do what we like, is to like what we do. It's not to have what we want, it's to want what we have. As it is, like it, look at it as you have it, and like it. And even if you want to change it, the only way to change it is to love it. Because you know it yourself, you only are changed by those that love you, right? If they try to force you, if they try to conquer you, they won't change you. If they love you, they will change you. So even the bad things you have, and of course you want to improve them, everybody does, that's natural. But please remember that the only way you're going to change them is if you love them. Because everything has something positive about it. The world has a meaning, and that meaning is good. That is a good meaning. There are lots of bad things in the world, but that's not the meaning of the world. The meaning of the world is good from the start. Let me give you an example for you to understand what I'm telling you about. Everybody knows you have to defend nature. Actually, there were talks about that today, right? You have to protect nature, protect the environment. That's great. If you think about it, nature is very terrible, isn't it? There are lots of predators, extreme weather, hurricanes, earthquakes. Nature is terrible, horrible, really. But you have to protect it. You have to love it. Why? Because it's the one you only have. You don't have another one. It's the only one. Well, it's the same thing with humanity. It's the same thing with society. Why do you respect and love so much nature and don't respect the other thing, which is as essential as the first one? So, please, love it as it is. Not because it's good, but because it's yours. You're going to change it. That's normal. But change it carefully, gently. Try to do it without the clock being ticking, right? Forget about the clock. Care, care about life as it is happening. You don't control it. It's happening. Like it. Because the wisdom of life is like what we have. I can summarize everything I'm telling you in a technical formula. It's a technical formula, but uh, I think uh, you'll not forget it. Love God above all things and your neighbor like yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs>